Yo, what's going on Dragon Ballers? Welcome back to another discussion video. In today's video, we're talking about the set 12 ban list predictions and wish list. So this video is gonna talk about a lot of stuff that the community has been talking about already over on the Facebook groups. Basically, we're gonna be looking at what the community has, you know, kind of calmly come together and said, this stuff needs to be addressed, this stuff needs to be looked at. We're gonna look at a few different options on how these different problems can be addressed. We're gonna talk about how big or small the problems they are. Just basically all stuff that we'll see leading up to the ban list. We're probably getting it in, if I had to guess, probably like a week or two. It's usually like three to four weeks before the set comes out. So uh, it's coming out end of January. So keep that in mind. Guys, if you're new here, definitely subscribe. Hit that bell so you miss a video. If you wanna help the channel out, go down in the description, check out all the different links. If you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, any of that stuff, go to Dex Protection, put your order in. That being said, let's just get started. All right, the first and probably most obvious deck we'll talk about in today's video, guys, we're talking about Vegex. This deck had to go through three different alterations in order to find some state of balance, right? So all through three of those different times, this deck has still come out and just been an absolute terror on the format. And it's in a weird spot because this deck doesn't take up like a crazy high percentage of like any given top cut. And we are in like a weird state of, of tournaments right now, right? Whether you're looking at like the bigger online webcam tournaments, we're looking at the smaller IRL in-person tournaments. This deck still manages to win a lot, which is, um, it's kind of interesting because it doesn't take up an abnormal amount of spots in any top cut, but it does win very, very consistently. Again, you know, you look at certain areas like Florida, for instance, a lot of Florida events because PPG is hosting a lot of tournaments down there. Those players have a, uh, a pretty big bias towards Vegex. They love to play it. They love aggro. They play Vegex a lot. But you look at other tournaments as well, and this deck actually had a four-week win streak uh, just a few weeks ago in set 11 slash draft block six meta. It's been winning very, very consistently, even though it doesn't appear to be overly represented in any given top cut. Now, this deck, what's the problem with it? Well, if you ask me my honest opinion, I, I gotta say it's a leader at this point. If you go through three alterations, and the deck is still overly powerful in my opinion the leader is the problem and i think that's pretty apparent mostly because of the burst five so if you look at burst and dragon ball super if you look at you know mill strategies in general the the gold standard the the majority of leaders that do burst or mill they mill three cards right so you have your different black leaders that are overall centric you have leaders like clash goku that put three in the drop inherently you have dredge goku puts three in the drop inherently and any of your other burst leaders in all the other colors right Vegex is the only leader in the game that bursts five cards. Uh, when you have so many cards now in the Dragon Ball Super card game, like we have that work in the drop area, particularly for black, you have the uh, the four drop boo that's basically a sand instincts for black. You have a uh, foo mission accomplished. You have all the different time agents that get value when they're milled by Vegex. They basically come into play. So when you're giving this leader Vegex, the ability to do that more so than any other leader you're you're pretty much just saying hey this leader is going to accrue the most value in a drop area centric deck you're basically just you know making that a, a thing that can't be avoided vegex is just going to do that because he mills more cards than any other leader uh, another problem i think vegex has is that he's allowed to be aggressive via a lot of that value he generates from bursting super uh, super fast he's allowed to do that without any drawbacks because unlike red broly and reboot gohan which we will talk about in today's video those are aggro decks that yes they are super fast and sometimes very oppressive but they have to they have to damage themselves they have to cut life in order to do a lot of their aggressive things vegex doesn't have to do that as vegex you can either sit back and let your opponent do damage to you play a little bit of a slower game if it will work to your benefit or you can just rip life super fast with several cards in the deck and just get awakened super quickly and just you know pour your hand onto the field and just go in right vegex can play both those games as where red broly and Reboot Gohan have a harder time doing that. So in my opinion, if you're gonna build a deck or if you're gonna design a deck in Dragon Ball Super that's gonna be hyper aggressive like that, you have to give them the drawback of, you know, being dangerous with their life, right? You have to give them the drawback of potentially dying on a crackback, right? Vegex doesn't always have to deal with that problem. But what's the reality of the situation? Um, I think it's very, very unlikely that Vegex is going to get hit on the ban list because he is the, the flagship card of a starter deck, right? This is the leader of a starter deck. Imagine how bad it would feel if you bought a starter deck and the leader inside of it was just unplayable, right? Like it's just banned. You couldn't play it. That would be a really, really bad feeling from a from a consumer perspective, from a new player perspective. So I do understand that they they can't ban this leader. At least that's the popular opinion. And I do agree with it. I think an errata to this leader would would probably be okay. I think uh, you know that could be manageable. Um, and again, you just reprint it like, like we've reprinted all the other errata cards, right? Maybe a burst three errata would be a lot more fair because it would put it pretty much in line with those other leaders 
that burst three cards and get you know a very similar amount of value one of the other things about vetrix as well is that he continues to burst on his awakened side whereas a lot of these black leaders don't do that so cards like the time agents for instance they get extra value in vetrix because they're still valid when you awaken as where like in xeno goku or really any other black leader you can think of they generally put cards from the warp back into the drops so they're not able to really use the time agents once they awaken that's just like another thing to to kind of keep in mind there but again they can't really hit vegex i hope they would errata it but i don't think that's gonna be the case either i think when you're looking at what's gonna happen to vegex it's probably one of these three cards here up in the upper left trunks lead descendant vegeta reluctant reinforcements or black sand splintering mind i think the community is mostly calling for splintering mind to be hit here because it kind of gives Vedex its most unfair win condition, which is basically that burn damage. You know, the deck is already super aggressive as it is. And for two energy, you get to go into Splintering Mind, get yourself self-awakened. And that kind of goes into what I was saying before, where Vedex can kind of just sit back, play a slower game if it needs to. But with Splintering Mind, you can play a super fast game. Sparking Seven is incredibly easy with this deck because there's two turns and you get that pretty much online. But yeah, that unfair win con of the burn damage, that's actually pretty hard to interact with. Uh, this is a big reason why a lot of people die turn two, turn three to, to Vegex, right? And they kind of just can't do anything about it. So uh, I think a splintering mine hit would be perfectly okay uh, if they did that. It would definitely drop the power level of Vegex, but the problem with Vedex as a leader is it's going to be a leader that's just always waiting to be broken, right? It's kind of like Super Shenron. Uh, a, a leader that skips a turn, you know, even though you hit Child's Wish, if you print a card and make a mistake of not accounting for Super Shenron in the design, Super Shenron could very easily be broken. So what they did with that leader was 100% appropriate. Vedex probably needs a similar treatment, but I, again, because it's in a starter deck, they probably won't do it. I think Splintering Mine is the best hit here, but uh, other people are calling for Trunks Lee Descendant to get hit to one or possibly zero. That's not bad either because, you know, Vegeta Reluctant Reinforcements is the main enabler of this whole combo, but without Elite Descendant, he's not nearly as playable as he is with Trunks because otherwise you're paying three energy for this Vegeta. And let me tell you, no, no Vedex player is going to pay three to play this Vegeta. It's just never going to happen. It's not going to be fast enough to be considered an aggro deck. So without Trunks, Vegeta becomes pretty much unplayable. So Trunks could also get hit as well. And then if, if Reluctant Reinforcement is not playable, Splintering Mine is probably not going to be playable. No Vedex player will cast it for four. I can, uh, I can pretty much almost guarantee you that. But um, keeping in mind that, you know, we don't know exactly what's going to happen with this. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you think would be the best hit to Vegex. Or maybe you think it doesn't even need one. I definitely think the power level of Vegex is a lot lower than it was before the other three limits they did. The other three nerfs. But it still seems like it needs something because it's still winning super consistently. And, uh, and that just seems to be just a tad bit of an issue in terms of power level. But again, let me know in the comments below what you think. Let's move on. Next up, Red Broly. So Red Broly is one that I, I do hear people's concerns that it needs to be addressed in some way, but I really don't see how you hit Red Broly without making the deck absolutely unplayable. Like Astonishing Potential Broly is, is the money card of the deck and it's the deck that makes the whole thing run really smoothly. You know, it's your one drop swap. It searches any Broly piece you're missing. It gets you a blocker into play, which actually gives you a nice amount of defense in a lot of scenarios. So it is like the linchpin of the deck, but, but what can you do? You can't really hit it to one. That would seriously make the deck unplayable in my opinion, because you obviously you wouldn't be able to consistently open it. You couldn't consistently see it off of Vampa. So I don't think hitting Astonishing Central Broly is the right way to go because it would make the deck unplayable. And then my teammate Russell actually made a really interesting point where you could limit Bob Broly's best friend to one. And that would only give you one usage of Astonishing Potential per game. But the main logic in Dragon Ball Super is like Planet Vampa, for instance, in this very same deck, most people play two copies of Planet Vampa because they don't want to get stuck with, with one copy in their life, right? If you play a one of and it's in your life, and you need to search it out well you're probably gonna be out of luck because if it ends up in your life you're just never gonna be able to search it for the rest of the game so think about the same thing with sonic potential if if ba was at one and it was in your life uh you probably would lose on the spot and i'm not even i'm not even exaggerating when i say that if you play broly crit a life and then go look for a ba and it's it's in your life you probably lose right there on the spot if you're especially if you're missing your three drop broly or realistically any of your brolies uh that you probably lose right there on the spot it's not even an exaggeration when i say that but i, I don't think either of those are the right call I, again i really just don't see what you could do to this deck to not absolutely kill it but i do want to know in the comments below what you think good thing though is that mecha frieza is actually going to be a pretty hard counter to red broly in a lot of scenarios because you can use a turn zero tyrannical blow which is a uh, a cold bloodless for three or lesses that came out in draft box six so red broly will have a much worse matchup going into set 12 which is a good thing this deck will have much more of a check so that's something that's definitely worth keeping in mind 
Reboot Gohan, another uh, really, really strong deck in this current format we find ourselves in. A lot of that's because we're in a best of one heavy scenario, especially with these online tournaments and even a lot of the IRL tournaments not wanting to run super long. So Reboot Gohan has really been shining in those environments, but it's also done pretty well in best of three tournaments that I've recorded here on the channel in like the meta breakdown videos and whatnot. The number one card that people call for to be hit in this deck is Feet Kamameha. And I can totally agree with that. And I and I, I can actually really see that being a thing they do on this ban list. Because the thing with Feet is, right, or at least the deck in general, there's a lot of cards where you can combo, get to high numbers really easily. Like uh, Feet Kamameha, Cells, Earth Destroying Kamameha, Pseudo Combos if you play them. Uh, and a lot of them have various effects. Pseudo Combos draw, Cells, Earth Destroying Kamameha, rips a card of the opponent's hand. But Feet is probably the most egregious offender. Because when you're getting up to high numbers like that, right, and especially this leader that a lot of times makes you take triple strike, if they get to 60k or whatever off of like two, three cards, they're, you know, you're probably taking that damage as unfortunate as it is, especially if it's like turn one. Feet makes it really unfair because you're taking that big damage and you're getting zero cards out of it. You know, the, the inherent mechanic of the game is take damage and get card advantage by getting that. Uh, and crit is generally de delegated to smaller attackers, right? Usually single strikers, sometimes double strikers in terms of like red broly but but anyways feet kind of makes that mechanic a little bit too broken because you're taking big damage that you really can't hope to combo out of and it makes all of that critical so feet is the most logical ban here uh, i could see a small scenario in which they just ban the leader entirely but i don't think they'll go that route because there was a long time where reboot gohan wasn't that great and a lot of people do account that to the best of one format we find ourselves in another great thing is that yellow seems to be a lot more playable in set 12 than it has been the previous two sets so yellow being one of the hardest counters to reboot gohan should help keep the deck in check but i think feet is the appropriate hit and i, and I do have a i do think they'll do that it seems just to, just to make the most sense next up we're talking about dorm potential unleashed this is a card that a lot of people think need to be hit here uh, on the ban list i will say though i mean week one of set 11 go tanks was absolutely everywhere it was dominating it was insane but over the weeks it's really just fallen down several pegs like you see maybe one go tanks here one majin vegeta there one clash goku there that's kind of what you see for green nowadays it's not overly oppressive no matter how much people want to complain about uh hand destruction it just isn't that overly oppressive in the meta i understand at a locals hand control can be very very annoying because you're trying to kind of just have a good time and whatnot and hand control it's probably the opposite of having a good time at least if you're on the receiving end but dorm potential unleashed on its own i don't think is a huge problem if you ask me my personal opinion i think master roshi coming out origins is a much bigger issue and i say issue uh kind of lightly because it's more annoying than anything else like it's kind of appropriately costed like you use dormant you pitch roshi roshi pays an energy gets dormant back and green decks aren't super fluid with their energy right but if you get to that longer extended game where you're at like five six energy then yeah common mount origins kind of uh you know ceases to be an energy problem right i think that banning origins is absolutely fine you know green decks will miss it but you know green decks will still have access to dormant now it's just you know you got to draw your two to three dormants over the course of the game you can't just get it back super easily so and then finally guys this is not me saying that Obu needs to be hit at all this is just like a funny point i wanted to bring up at the end of this video imagine the last time we did a video like this where we talked about like the upcoming bands on the uh on the set 11 ban list, I guess. Obuni was on everybody's radar. Everyone wanted Obuni gone, and now blue decks aren't even playing like four copies of it. They're playing two copies, like if any. It's just so funny how, you know, Obuni has kind of taken a seat back as one of those problematic cards that a lot of people saw it to be. And that just, you know, reminds me of another point that there, you know, any of the cards we talk about on this list, any of the cards, any of the strategies, there could be something that comes out, like much in the case of Dormant for Obuni, there could be a card or a strategy or a deck that comes out that, you know, totally hard counters one of the decks that we view as problematic right now. And that could inherently put it in check like we saw with Obuni. Like, I don't think you could ask anyone right now, do you think Obuni needs to be hit? I don't think anyone could have a legitimate argument to say yes, because blue is not all that popular right now. And in blue decks, Obuni is not a four of staple. It's a two of like, at the most uh from what i've been seeing at least from six succeeding lists so uh that was kind of my case for red broly it seems like mecha frieza will have a pretty solid time against it with that tyrannical blow extra card but you know we'll have to wait and see guys and anyways in the comments below i want to know what you guys think is going to be hit on the set 12 ban list i appreciate you guys watching and i will see you next time